I think that one of the, the greatest experiences that I had here was being able to have the flexibility to, um, to go after um, the passions that I have. Um, for instance, when Katrina hit New Orleans, um, that was my fall term freshman year. Um, so I took one term and then I decided to leave and go down to New Orleans. When I came back from New Orleans, um, the moment that I decided to declare my major was a very difficult moment for me. Um, as a student, you're kind of trying to figure out where you fit in the world, um, where, where you should be when you exit out of the U of O. Um, and so trying to uh, determine that focus was a really difficult process. I knew that I was passionate about serving people um, and that I really wanted to pursue that. Um, so when I decided to declare uh, 3 p.m., I actually did not know that there was, um, that there was a nonprofit focus at the U of O. And when I talked to an advisor, uh, they were able to point me in the right direction. Um, and so knowing that, I was able to pursue uh, exactly what I was passionate about and I knew that I would be successful in. My role that I hope to pursue in this community uh, at Pacific Continental Bank is bridging a gap between business, the business for-profit world and that of the nonprofit community. Um, I believe that nonprofits are just so passion-driven um, to serve the communities and the people that they, they believe are not being served. Um, and the result is a lot of the times that passion can, uh, can drive them right to the ground. And so I see the opportunity to really um, to act as a bridge between the for-profit financial world and the nonprofit world so that they can be more sustainable in serving those communities. Education doesn't just stop in college. Um, it, it continues on our day-to-day. -day. And so for me, you know, I'll never stop learning, um, seeking opportunities to, to be taught. Um, and as I leave the U of O, I think um, that uh, I'll definitely continue to, um, to ask of people to be professors to me um, in, out there in the community and in the world. So um, that's something that I, I really think is a, a privilege. And hopefully one day I can offer that to somebody else as well. So I'd like to thank uh, my wife Lizzie um, and also the friends uh, that are sitting that are going to be sitting next to me um, and just the people in the community that are here my family um, I think that all of us have uh, have a reason uh, to be thankful for all of your support and um, it's something that I really appreciate from my own perspective and I know that everyone else sitting next to me uh, would like to, to thank their families as well for being here and support through the whole process. So uh, it's a special day and uh, we made it. So I started finding myself really enjoying my social science classes that I had to take and I ended up taking Jerry Burke's political science uh, political science class which was political movements and change and it got me so riled up like I wanted to go do a rally or a sit in and I wanted to change the world every time I went to class and I was so passionate about what he was teaching and I kind of found myself finding my home in the political science department. Professor Courtney Smith in the political science department is amazing. Um, she is one of the strongest most intelligent, passionate people I've ever met and she's just awe-inspiring because her knowledge and her passion for teaching really gets you excited. And I took her class, uh, the first term, first class I took from her um, was about, you know, the politics of the body and then the next term I saw that she was teaching a class on um, politics in Africa and I wasn't really that interested but I took it anyway because I loved her as a teacher and I took it and her passion for what she's teaching about and the fact that she had lived in Senegal and just got me really excited and then I spent the next two years at the University of Oregon taking classes on Africa. 
The pas passion for learning is something that I've always had. I may not be the best student. I may not want to go to the library and study, but I love learning. I, I like having that knowledge and being able to call on it later and seeing how, you know, I have minors in ethnic studies and music, which are seem completely opposite of each other, but they interlap so much. And just seeing that intersection of education kind of play off of each other in the African diaspora and how it related to my history of hip hop class you know, who you don't think of these things until they actually happen. And to me, knowledge and learning is your key to that. It enlightens you to make those connections and to see the struggles of people and to, you know, relate to people on a deeper level. And it's something that I would never get without loving to learn. If I had to do it all over again, I would absolutely choose the University of Oregon. I can't imagine being anywhere else. Um, I got accepted to every school that I applied to except the University of Oregon. Um, and I was kind of like, hmm, I have to get into this school. So I met with admissions and I, you know, I made it happen. And I was so thankful that I did because the home that I have found here is absolutely fitting of me. And whenever I go anywhere else, it's very obvious that I belong in Eugene and I belong at the University of Oregon. And, with the people in Eugene who are so uniquely Eugene. Um, it just has really helped me grow as a person and discover who I am. And so when I move or wherever I end up having to go for work or if I go to grad school, I know that I will continue to have that Eugene feel, that University of Oregon passion. I want to take the opportunity to thank my parents, obviously. Um, they've always been supportive and they've always been there for me. And it's something that I couldn't have ever made it without my mom and my dad. And, their their passion has made me passionate about life and I, I absolutely couldn't have done it without them. I also um, had a, an amazing group of mentors at the University of Oregon that have made me passionate about life and about you know going on to be in student affairs or whatever and I, whatever I end up doing. Um, I couldn't have done it without them. John Holland, Cora Bennett, you know Amber Garrison, these are all people, Kat McGraw, people that have helped me grow and have really set up a positive example for me to want to aspire to be and I thank you guys for that and always being there for me whether it's been tough love or you know offering that letter of recommendation it, I couldn't have done it without you and all the students that I've got the opportunity to meet and to work with um, you've changed my life.
be seated. Welcome to the University of Oregon and congratulations, class of 2010. We'd like you to please give a warm welcome to the cast of Anna Lee in the Depths of the Night to the stage to perform Rain Falls Down, composed by UO Junior Jameson Tabor and faculty member Jim Schmore. Better? I like hedgehogs, but I don't like swings, or this bed, or people leaving. But swings can be fun, right? If they don't go too high. And the bed might not be what you're used to, but Grandma's quilt is snugly, right? And pretty. But underneath in the dark, it's scary. And then I fall into... The depths of the night? Yes. And I like the adventure, but... But people go away, yes. And sometimes, only sometimes, they come back to you with stories for sure, maybe with presents. The best, though, with songs. Do you have a song for me? Rain falls down. And ruins your birthday party. Tulips come up. That's how you know it's spring. Grandma finds a crack in her favorite china cup. It was an accident. Lucky Penny found nobody around to see it. The circus comes to town. Rain falls down. What do you mean? Never can say just one way. Hope from a doubt, find a new route, and maybe some delay. Friends are in town, rain falls down. I'm not sure I like this song either. We don't always like everything we get, and things don't always happen the way we want them to the way they should. We must all come and go And the years say hello Always turning There's the yes and the no which way to go, always learning. Beauty passes quickly, dear one, better know it now. Loving isn't easy, dear one, better learn how. Rain falls down. Tulips come up. Grandma finds a crack in her favorite china cup. Take a look around. Honor what you found. And share it, no matter where you're bound. Rain falls down. Good morning, and welcome to the University of Oregon graduation celebration.
I am Richard Lariviere, and I have the privilege of serving as the president of the University of Oregon. I'd like to thank our students for that wonderful performance of an original piece by U of O junior Jameson Tabor and faculty member John Schmoor. And I'd also like to thank our Oregon Wind Ensemble for the professional music. Thank you. Please rise now and join me in the singing of our national anthem led by the UO Gospel Singers. Let's give these folks another round of applause. Well, welcome to all of you, students and families. For many of you, this is a milestone, the completion of four years of learning at the University of Oregon. For some others, earning advanced degrees, it may even be longer. For myself, it is also a milestone the completion of one year of learning at the University of Oregon, one of the best times of learning that I've ever had. I hope, I believe, that each of you receiving degrees today can say the same, that this has been a challenging, 
meaningful, intellectually stimulating, and joyful learning experience. I came to the University of Oregon for many reasons, primary being the excellence and commitment of our faculty. I also became, came because of the passion of the students, a passion to learn, to grow, and to commit themselves to service to make this world better for all of us. Now, words like these are common to hear on a day like this, I know. But I believe that your passion for learning and the actions that accompany that learning will enable you to take these ordinarily common words and translate them throughout your lives into uncommon accomplishments. For you family, friends, and also graduates, enjoy this day of ceremony and celebration. Walk the campus again. You graduates, share with your family and friends the experiences that have brought you to today. Experiences that are and should be life transforming. That transformative power is what education is about. That's the power of the University of Oregon and that's what this day is about. Congratulations and best wishes. I'd now like to introduce those members of the platform party who will not be speaking. Would you please stand and be recognized as you are introduced? Deb Carver, Dean of the Libraries. <laughs> Michael Redding, Vice President for University Relations. Robin Holmes, Vice President for Student Affairs. Richard Linton, Associate Dean of the Graduate School. Francis Dyke, Vice President for Finance and Administration. Charles Martinez, Vice Provost for International Equity and Diversity. Karen Sprague, Vice Provost for Undergraduate Studies. Russ Tomlin, Vice Provost for Academic Affairs and Paul Shang, Associate Vice President and Dean of Students. Now to bring greetings and a message today from the Oregon State Board of Higher Education, Board Member Kirk Schuler. Good morning, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to our fine graduates today. President LaRiviere, distinguished honorees, members of the faculty, graduates, parents, families, and friends, I am pleased to bring you greetings on behalf of the Oregon State Board of Education, Higher Education. It is an honor to celebrate this commencement with you. As a 1987 graduate of the University of Oregon, it is truly an honor to stand here today with you to celebrate the accomplishments of the class of 2010. You will hear many uh, speeches today wishing you good luck and asking you to go forth and excel in everything you do. My speech will be very short and just ask you for one thing. Please remember us. By us, I mean the communities of Oregon, which have nurtured many of you since birth and some of you for four, five, or six years during your time here at the University of Oregon. Remember us as you look in the mirror and see the values and the intellect that this institution and this state has helped to instill in you. Remember us as you determine your career path and how you can contribute to your own future and the futures of others in your family and your community. Remember us as you complete or repeat the rites of passage that are part of our adult reality, like paying taxes, paying off your student loans, and planning for your own children's college education. These are the types of responsibilities that link you to your community, this institution, and the state of Oregon. Remember us. Why? Because you have been the recipient of others' goodwill, of their time, of their concern, of their intellect, of their finances, and of their patience, so that you could be one of the few in this state who make it to their university graduation. Remember us means remembering where you came from and understanding the responsibility to give back to your families and communities and those special people and institutions that have made a positive 
transformational impact on your life. Uncle Sam once said, we need you. But in this case, it's Oregon that needs you. I know that all of you can't stay and work and live in these communities, even if you wanted to. But for those of you who can, your contributions to the state are what will take us into a brighter future. There is no they when it comes to pointing a finger and saying, they need to improve the way things are in Oregon. We are they. Oregon is us. Each and every one of us. If we want Oregon to be better and our community to be better able to support us, then each of us has the responsibility to do what we can. Pointing fingers doesn't work and is an ineffective and mute gesture. Instead, focus your intellect, your passion, your skills, and expertise on Oregon and make your mark. We need you and we're counting on you. So remember us as we will remember you on this day, going proudly forward to make our state and our world a little better than it was before you graced our fond place, our Oregon. Congratulations, class of 2010, and good luck to each of you. With a message on behalf of the students at the University of Oregon, I would like to introduce the outgoing president of the Associated Students of the University of Oregon, Emma Calloway. Okay. Hello, everyone. Oh. Hello. Hello. Welcome, especially our friends and family from out of town. Thank you for being here today to celebrate the work of our peers, both undergraduate and graduate students. Today is one of those rare days with friends and families that everything is in place. Today is the day we forget a lot of life's worries and bask in the joy of finishing mountains of work and immense growth in the last few short years. A lot of us can see a good friend here, maybe someone who got us through a challenging class or picked us up some soup when we've been sick. I know I'll have a hard time saying thank you to all the friends that have meant so much to, so much to me while my time in Eugene. Today we thank those friends for loving us as great friends do. Thank you for your patience and your kindness. Today is a day to celebrate and give thanks. We share many common experiences, maybe in the dorms with cheesy grillers at two in the morning. <laughs> I like those. <laughs> uh, many of us have families who've supported us financially and emotionally through our time here. I hope my parents and my little brother know how much they've given of themselves to provide me with a quality education. We should thank all of those people who worked late nights and weekends to get us through school. Maybe we also share a class or a professor. I owe a lot to that really smart kid in each class who helped me through tough material. But that same kid also messed with the curves, so thanks a lot there. I also know that a lot of us don't share common experiences. Today we should celebrate the student parents who had to juggle their families and their studies. Today we celebrate those who have been traditionally marginalized and thank them for fighting for their access to education. Today we celebrate those who have felt left out because of their documentation status, their sexual orientation, their country of origin. Today we celebrate those who have had moments of sadness or struggle. But most of all, we celebrate each of us for having a unique experience and through the process help to elevate what it means to be a duck. What I hope most of all though is that we share for the rest of our lives the desire to be givers and not lenders. We are ducks, and I know I will remember for the rest of my life the privilege of being a college graduate. We have the opportunity to follow our passions. Many, are, many of our peers are going on to save the world, one person, one student, one cure at a time. But those gifts should be freely given. We do not need anything in return. We do not need to lend with stipulation. We should be givers. Paulo Ferreira is an author and a scholar who has inspired many great revolutions. And a mentor of mine sent me this quote to consider the education that is now behind me. He said, there's no such thing as a neutral education process. Education either functions as an instrument 
which is used to facilitate the integration of generations into the logic of the present system and bring about conformity into it. Or it becomes the practice of freedom, the means by which men and women deal critically with reality and discover how to participate in the transformation of our world. The University of Oregon has given us the tools. We have fought to absorb everything this place has to offer. And now we move forward and decide whether our education will allow for conformity to the status quo or whether we will take this education and give to the world much needed change. Our degrees give us the tools to work in a cubicle in an already developed company and do a job that was developed by someone else. Or what I hope to, that we do with our education instead is innovate. Innovate in our positions, challenge in the companies that we work for, or even start our own businesses, or give to the world that something that hasn't even yet been created. I know I, need to give, I know I need to be a giver. Give to my work, allow my mind to be healthy and free for creative flow. And give to my community with the skills that I have learned here. Our gifts should shape the world. Let us not use our education for conformity. College, I believe, is a selfish time. We go to our class for our own personal gain. We learn for the benefit of our minds, unless, unless we put our education to good use. It will be challenging to give of ourselves, and honestly, after four years, all I really want to do is sit on a beach somewhere. But I know it will be easiest to give of myself if I continue to find my passion. A wise man of our generation, Tupac, once said, <laughs> when my heart can beat no more, I hope to die for a principle or a belief that I have lived for. I hope we live with that same sense of passion. I want to better the access to education for all people. I believe the power of the collective, and I believe in the power of democracy. I would be lucky to hold a representative seat one day, but for now, I have to keep learning and work to understand the needs of the communities around me. Ducks are unique and giving people. You have to be. We can't be around this much beauty and not want to give back. Nelson Henderson once said, the true meaning of life is to plant trees under whose shade you do not expect to sit. It is our privilege to go out and plant trees in the world knowing that others need shade. I know we are all unique, but I hope we have in common for the rest of our lives is knowing that we are part of a group of givers and not lenders. We may be tired, and we deserve to celebrate today with gusto and vigor. But tomorrow, we should take our privilege, our degrees, and go into the world to give, expecting nothing in return. I am thankful that we are a part of a class that live up to high personal standards. I am lucky to count myself among us. Congratulations to the class of 2010. We did it. Thank you, Emma. Over the past year, I have enjoyed the opportunity to get to know many of the wonderful students at the University of Oregon. So far, you have witnessed students from theater and dance in the School of Music and Dance. It's an honor to introduce the next portion of our program because it will provide personal narratives that describe the unique student experience at the University of Oregon. I would first like to introduce Miriam Lipton, who is graduating with a bachelor's degree in general science and Russian and East European studies. And she will be followed by Rachel Cushman, who is graduating with a bachelor's degree in ethnic studies. Miriam? My experiences at the University of Oregon have been wonderful and unique. Because of the opportunities afforded to me by the U of O, I've traveled to four continents, lived through a war, learned to speak a new language, studied biology in the Amazon, made new friends, and increased my collection of Birkenstocks by about 300%. And yes, finally, after five years, yes, five, I now have my degree 
oh, almost in hand. Really, I've had such a great time here that I sort of don't want to leave. Graduation is bittersweet. I'm sad to be leaving Eugene, but I'm excited at what lies ahead. My experiences here at the U of O have prepared me well for the next chapter in my life. When I was a freshman, I wouldn't have thought that it was even possible, but now I plan on applying to medical school, where I want to study to become a physician and work in foreign countries helping people in need. When I graduated high school, I was so terrified of the idea of college that I put it off for a year. And when that year passed, I was still terrified. I had no idea what I wanted to do, what I wanted to major in, and don't even get me started on what I was going to wear that first day of class. But after working for a year as a sales clerk, I realized that not having an education was even scarier. So I decided to go to the U of O. That first day of class, freshman year, the fear did not ease up. One of my first classes was General Chemistry Lab. The professor was going over the syllabus and explaining how important it was to be safe in the lab and that closed-toed footwear was key. At this point, I was still pretty scared. Oh, no, chemicals. Oh, no, chemistry. But then the professor continued. And because this is Eugene, I feel I must say this. No, Birkenstocks and wool socks do not count as closed-toed shoes. <laughs> at that moment, I looked down at my own Birkenstock feet and immediately felt at ease. The fear was gone. The professor was funny, personable, and knew about the students. Yeah, this was the place for me. But that was just the beginning. I tried to fit in as well as possible. Coming from Los Angeles, where I wasn't used to the rain, I soon bought a pair of Chacos, a rain jacket, and I wore it almost every day. I did all the other Eugene things, too. I climbed the stairs to the fifth floor of the PLC building for office hours, but then I realized that was way too difficult and started taking the elevators instead. I did the Sudoku in the Oregon Daily Emerald, only realizing that the gold the day before was just as easy as the silver. I went to Carson Brunch every weekend, and by the end of freshman year, I never wanted resident hall food ever again, only finding myself sophomore year begging my RA friends to take me out for some Ducks Bistro and Fire and Spice. I waited for what has seemed like hours at the EMU post office to buy a stamp. I found whole afternoons completely gone, looking through all the wacky things sold at Hiren's. <laughs> I've become a, vegeta a vegetarian who's fanatic about recycling. I never leave my apartment without my clean canteen. I use my own mug when I have hot tea. I'm a huge Roma fan. I've taken naps on the velvet couches in the lounge in the EMU. I'm proud to say that my school is the Animal House School. I'm so glad that I won't have to take a class in Columbia 150 ever again. <laughs> I've taken three craft center classes and walked away with art that only my mother would love. I've watched On the Rocks every Friday and probably seen the YouTube video where they rickrolled the New York subway about 15 times already. I went to the Rose Bowl and cheered so hard that my voice was gone halfway through the game. When I was a freshman, I couldn't have imagined that I would be standing here now graduating, 
looking back at my years, my wonderful time here in Eugene, as well as the opportunities the UO, the UO has given me for world travel, including my year abroad in St. Petersburg, Russia, my summers studying biology in the Amazon, helping with the post-war effort in Israel, and learning about the culture in Uruguay. During my time here at the U of O, I have really felt that I fit in, and I'm sad that it's now almost over. Of course, there have been ups and downs, but in the end, the U of O has been a great place for me to get a great education, and I look forward to the future that lies ahead. I entered the U of O not knowing what I wanted, and I stand here today feeling accomplished and motivated. I have become a typical Eugenian, and despite my California upbringing, a part of me will always be a duck. Thank you. People say that in college you find yourself. I cannot say that in college I've found all of my dreams and aspirations to have come to fruition, but I can say that the University of Oregon has given me the tools for success. Shalahayam, Nika Nim, Rachel Cushman, Nika Tilikum, and Saika Chinook. My name is Rachel Cushman. I'm an enrolled member of the Lower Chinook Indian Nation. I'm also mixed of native and European lineages. I come from a community where college is not often attainable or even in the forefront of people's minds. Survival is the ultimate goal. I keep thinking about a speech Dr. Robin Holmes gave at the Office of Multicultural Academic Success graduation. She said that for her first term as a PhD student, she did not feel like she belonged on her campus. Personally, I felt the same way. There's been many times where I did not feel like I belonged here. Most of the people that I grew up with are not getting their post-secondary degrees. Some of those people are locked up for mandatory minimums. Some of those people dropped out of their educational careers so that they could help their families put food on the dinner table. It saddens me to say that several of the people that I grew up with are no longer with us. They never had a chance to make it out of adolescence. I struggled to get here, to be here, but while I have been here, I've not given up on my dreams. During my time at the University of Oregon, I've been dedicated to this community, and this community has been dedicated to me. There were many times in which I nearly gave up because I thought the collegiate road was not for me. It was too expensive. It took me away from my community, my family. College was at times draining on my physical, mental, emotional, spiritual health. I believe that I couldn't do it alone. While in college, I've lost many loved ones. I've been homeless. A lot of people don't know that, but I've been homeless. I lived out of my car for a term. One term during my sophomore year, I lost nearly 25 pounds because I had to make a choice. Pay my rent, buy my school books, or eat. I chose to have a roof over my head. I've come to realize that I'm not alone. I've had some amazing support systems while in college. So those support systems are my family, first and foremost, some amazing advisors, dedicated professors, community members, and some peers who thought they were alone too. I can't say that all students experience the hardships that I have while in school, but I can't say I've had it the worst. <laughs> I'm one of the lucky ones who did not drop out. Today I stand here in front of you, all of you as my witness. I could do it, I did. I'm proud to say that I'm graduating with a Bachelor of Science majoring in Ethnic Studies. Okay. Yeah, woo! <laughs> so I'm supposed to talk to you about activism and my involvement here on campus at the University of Oregon. I promise you that the depression portion is over. And I'm going to talk to you about the power of the student voice at the University of Oregon. Despite my struggles, I've continuously worked to make this campus more accessible and inclusive and affordable for all who dream of attaining their post-secondary degrees. The moment, from the moment I stepped foot on this campus, I've been deeply involved with the student movement. Our student autonomy is incomparable to any other school in the nation. Yeah. Other schools aspire to be like us. 
We have control of our student fees with over 160 programs to get involved with and make a difference to our university's cultural and physical development. My first experience with the student movement was when I was a freshman. Students demanded that their needs be met. UO Action, a group of dedicated students, set out four demands. We called for diversity plans to be completed by all colleges and departments. We required that there be teeth to the bias response team. We demanded a queer studies minor to be created and we charged the College of Arts and Science to departmentalize ethnic studies. Our efforts have come to fruition. Students can do amazing things in the classrooms, but we can do amazing things in our community as well. I've been an active member of many groups on campus and held officer positions. Some of these groups are the Native American Student Union, the Multicultural Center, the Women's Center, the Oregon Students of Color Coalition. Oh, yeah, that's what I love to hear. <laughs> the Associated Students of University of Oregon Executive and the oldest honors society on campus, the Friars. In the end, I hope this speech has been inspirational. No matter where you find yourself in life, no matter how ro rough the road you are on is, don't give up, don't give in, reach for your dreams, be supportive of others' dreams, and give back to the community. For, the, for some of you, this is the end of your educational career, while other of you are gonna keep on going. No matter what your plans are, keep moving forward. Welcome to the real world class of 2010. Thank you, Miriam and Rachel, for sharing those insights and your stories. At this time, we have a special animated presentation designed by digital arts graduate Kyle Knapp called Duck Memories. If you'd please direct your attention to the display at the south end of the field. Thank you, Kyle, for that creative walk down memory lane for all of your peers. We continue our program with reflections from psychology graduate Ross Logan, followed by Emma Calloway and Getachu Casa, outgoing ASUO president and vice president.
Good morning. I wanted to start off my speech by again congratulating each of you on your tremendous accomplishment here this morning by becoming a graduate of the University of Oregon. Some of you may not feel it now, but this is truly a momentous occasion and something to be very proud of. So I want each of you to take a moment and just breathe in the pride of graduating because you might not like the question I have for you now. It's a question that I'm sure many of you have been asking yourselves for months now and a question that I'm positive your friends and family have been asking of you as well. So, what are you doing after you graduate? <laughs> now, some of you might be smiling wider at this point and maybe puffing out your chest a little bit too. Some of you are going on to graduate school or you've secured a full-time job doing what you love best or any number of combinations that has you doing something amazing after today. But I know this isn't true for all of you. In fact, there are many of you out there who are probably feeling just as I was feeling a couple of weeks ago. Scared, stressed, and clueless as to what the next step in life is going to be. After the past four months of interviews and resumes and cover letters and campus visits, I had turned up empty-handed. All I wanted was a job working within student affairs, and suddenly I felt as if my dream was over. How could this have happened? Haven't I been working hard in my classes, at my job, in my community? I mean, I've been an active leader on this campus practically since day one. By the second week of fall term my freshman year, I was voted vice president of my residence hall government. The next year, I was called to be a resident assistant. My passion for building communities flourished, and as I pushed myself to be a great community resource, I realized that my academic classes were giving me new tools to try in my role as an RA. I was able to combine the theories I was learning about in my psychology and business classes and directly utilize them in the creation of successful new programs for my residents. It's a year later, and I stand before you now as the senior resident assistant for the Hamilton Complex, supervising 26 student staff members and over 800 residents. On top of that, I've spent the past two years working with the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender queer community, implementing new programs, re-energizing old ones, and helping our queer community thrive on this campus. And still, all anyone can ask me is what am I doing after graduation? I felt like my entire four years of service was suddenly being invalidated. My 3.6 GPA, my work as a resident assistant, the freshman class I created and taught this past fall term about the history and culture of the LGBT. I mean, how many students can say they have had the chance to do that? But still, none of it seemed to matter. If I wasn't doing anything of any caliber after I left, then what was I worth? This feeling carried on for a while. And then a couple weeks ago, I was biding my time on Facebook when, <laughs> when I got an invitation to a birthday party from a friend. I hadn't seen this friend in a while, but I thought it might be nice to stop by and wish her a happy birthday. When I showed up, I realized I recognized a lot of the people there, and they in turn recognized me. For a whole group of them came over excitedly and gave me a hug. Ross, they shout, how are you? Good to see you. The problem was, I only knew one of these students' names. <laughs> I felt so embarrassed. So I said, um, I'm doing good, thanks. <laughs> then one of them shouts over to their friend to come over and introduce them to me. To add, now, I, I didn't know the student coming toward me, but I hoped that she would be my knight in shining arbor and say everyone's names during the conversation or, or something and save me from this awkwardness I was feeling. So I stuck out my head and said, hi, I'm Ross, nice to meet you. Of course, to add to my feelings of embarrassment, she replies, oh, so you're Ross, it's go so good to meet you. I've heard so much about you. Great, I thought, just great. Who are these students and why can't I remember their names? Finally, one of them interjects. Ross was our resident assistant our freshman year. Of course, as I look around the room, recognizing other former residents of mine, but why couldn't I remember these students' names standing before me? I generally prided myself on knowing all the residents in my hall, so it was bothering me that I couldn't remember their names. So I decided to show my cards and ask, did, did you all live on my floor? Oh no, they said. We live on the third floor, but we always considered you our resident assistant. And that's when it hit me. They remembered me because to them, I was a friend. I was someone you could count on, and I was someone you could trust. It didn't matter that we never interacted more than once or twice. It just mattered that I was there for him. This whole time, I'd been forgetting what real value I gained from my experiences here at the University of Oregon. I'd spent so much time focusing on the value of the titles I held instead of what I was, what I was really providing to the community. 
in every interaction I've ever had here, the impression I would leave with someone wouldn't be because of the title I carried, but rather the kind of person I was. I was learning a little bit more about myself with every student and staff and faculty member I met or worked with. I wasn't just giving back to the community. I was figuring out who I was as a person. My goal here this morning was to speak to you all about what it means to be uniquely UO and leaving a legacy, but I think I can take it one step further. After four years at this university, I've worked with dozens of professors, participated in many group projects, and have influenced a number of my fellow students in the residence halls and across campus. Through each of these interactions, I learned something new about myself, and I gave a bit of myself back to the university. And now I know what it means to be uniquely UO. The most unique part of this whole university are the students who attend here. We are uniquely the University of Oregon, and in turn, the University of Oregon is uniquely us. From this point forward, we will always be reflections of the UO, no matter where we go or what we do. And this is something to always be proud of. This university has prepared us to do great things in this world, and for that, we will always be thankful. And even though we may be in a state of transition now, unsure of what we might do next in our careers, we can wear a smile on our faces, knowing this university has helped us figure out who we are as people. Because at the end of our long roads ahead, when we look back on our lives, people won't ask us what we did, but rather who we were as members of this society. So no matter where your road in life may take you, you can always hold your head high. For today, you know who you are. You are a graduate of the University of Oregon, class of 2010. Thank you. What a beautiful day. Give, give it up for our uh, student speakers again. A round of applause. G and I are a little different sizes, so yeah, we're all good. <laughs> uh, thank you all for sharing your personal stories. Today we've heard from a wide range of student experiences. Being a duck means tru being truly unique. Rachel, thank you for showing us what perseverance and resilience really looks like. Kyle, thank you for showing us what a creative mind can do in the way that I didn't even remember all of those experiences until Kyle put them on film. We all have worked on many different projects here at the university, and I hope that some of these student speakers today showed us just a, an ounce of what we all have been capable of doing. And I'm, I'm so proud to be among us. Yeah, thank you, Ross, and thank you, um Miriam, for sharing your stories. Four continents, I got a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> um, I was asked to speak about Emma a little bit, um, this amazing person next to me, and our former uh, student body president. Um, and thinking about this, uh, I was only given one minute, and I didn't know exactly what to share. Um, it's hard to describe amazing in, in under one minute, but I'm gonna try. Um, Emma's one of the toughest people I know. And it's not because she played rugby. In the fifth grade, she was told that she was uh, diagnosed with uh, dyslexia and that she was going to struggle uh, for the remainder of her time in school. I realized in working with Emma for a year, the reason why she was so great at her job and so amazing was because of the lessons learned all through her life and the struggles that she faced um, being dyslexic. And the things that she taught me this year were Patience, determination, and giving 110% no matter what. As we've all realized, what, 22 years now in our lives, that we're all going to struggle, and there are going to be barriers in our lives. But as long as we're willing to give 110%, to be patient, and to stay determined, that we can achieve anything that we want. So thank you, Emma. I think it's important to share unique stories here today. Um, Gatacho Casa, our former vice president, is very unique and a special part of our class. A lot of you may not know, but Gatacho is Ethiopian and was born in the Sudan. He's a hard worker, and he's more reserved and quiet than I am with a very unique approach, but he often brings new points of view to every conversation I had with him. I would especially like to thank his parents who are here today for raising a wonderful son and a wonderful partner. It hadn't have been easy to come here and start a new life, but as ducks, we are better by having someone as humble and kind 
and someone who brings different perspectives to our communities. Anyway, today we celebrate as ducks. I, I expect that we all celebrate in style. Let's spend the day in this beautiful weather. There will be food on campus, and we deserve to spend the day basking in the glory of finishing hard years of work. Congratulations, undergrads, for choosing to take a big step and make opportunities for yourself. Congratulations, graduate students, for pushing yourselves far beyond what most people will do in their lifetime. We all could use a little luck in our job search, but that'll come around. We count ourselves lucky to have peers like you who push us. Congratulations, the class of 2010. We did it. Well, thank you, Ross, Emma, and Gitachu. And I would personally like to thank Emma and Gitachu for their leadership this year. I can say without reservation that you're the finest president and vice president that I've ever worked with at the University of Oregon. <laughs> it's now my honor and pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker. A good many people have said a good many things about architecture that it is inhabited sculpt sculpture, that it is petrified music, that it is space structured to serve its inhabitants. Each thought is true enough, though none tell the whole story, yet they make us aware and they make us think. Too often the entire world around us is taken for granted. Too often the completed work of an architect also suffers that fate appreciated for its function, but neglected as a creative work of art. Yet there are those architects who do make us take note, who do, by the mastery of their art, make us look with new eyes, with a new mind, a new awareness of these works of art within which we will live and work and play. Our speaker today is one of those architects, one of those artists. As principal designer of the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian in Washington, D.C., John Paul Jones worked to create an integration of design and the historical spirit appropriate to the structure. This work does indeed capture that spirit, and it continues. This and his other works, such as the Columbia River Gorge National Scenic Area Recreation Overview, the Portland International Airport Parkway, and the Africa Project at Portland's Washington Park Zoo express his efforts to bring art and construction into a form that serves more than function. Out of these creative efforts, he has also designed the U of O's Many Nations Longhouse as an expression of the essential cultural values of welcome, community, and learning for Native American students and peoples. The building serves as a gathering place for students and tribal groups and as a place where Native Americans and non-Natives can interact and learn from each other. We are extremely proud of this building and all that it represents. His work, he says, is strongly influenced by his American Indian heritage and his education here at the University of Oregon. He was the first person awarded the University of Oregon's Lawrence Medal for his distinguished career. He was the founder of the multidisciplinary firm Jones & Jones in Seattle. He is a University of Oregon graduate we are proud to have as our speaker today. It is with confidence that his words today will open our eyes and our minds to a new awareness in much the same way as his architecture does. Please join me in welcoming John Paul Jones. Congratulations. I know when I graduated, it was a wonderful celebration time. Um, you're about to become uh, part of a great institution with many successful graduates. Your uh, education here at the University of Oregon will help make each one of you successful and whatever you do. It's a pretty unique experience. 
And now that you have uh, reached your uh, part of your formal education goal, you need to stop. You need to stop for a while and listen to the people around you and the land around you, wherever you find your home and start your beginning. Um, if everybody ever seen the movie with Chief Dan George in it, he was a wonderful Coast Salish Indian. And I just want to give you a little words from him. He said, the beauty of the trees, the softness of the air, the fragrance of the grass will speak to you. The freshness of the stars, the freshness of the morning, the dewdrop on the flower will speak to you. The taste of salmon, the trail of the sun will speak to you. And the life that never goes away, the life that never goes away will speak to you and your heart will soar. You are just beginning your education. <laughs> You've worked really hard for many years, but you're just beginning your education. In my native community, when I graduated, they said, you're a baby. <laughs> you're a baby in your learning. You're just getting started. You know, indigenous people here in Oregon, the Northwest, and in North America have been here a long, long time. They come with lots of stories and gifts to us from experience. My Choctaw mother and grandmother in Oklahoma uh, passed on to me many gifts when I was a young man. And I said, thank you, and I was gone out into the wilds. Uh, but as later on in life, I learned that these were important gifts. Um, they were my second education. They were ancient gifts that were passed down from thousands of years of experience. And they centered around the natural world around me, the animal world around me, the spirit world around me, and the human world around me, where you pass on knowledge, you transfer knowledge to the next generation. And I was always told to not stand in one spot with these gifts, but to always keep evolving and moving. I was told to use those gifts to do good. They didn't tell me what to do. They said, use those gifts that you're given to do good. And as you move into your next level of education, I'd like to give you, all of you, a couple of gifts that were passed down to me. And I think it applies to not just the students from America, from Oregon, but from all over the world. As human beings, this is the first one, as human beings, we are wonderfully diverse, yet we're essentially similar. The second one is, we should honor the exquisite variety of each other's life ways because we have many shared principles that are basically essential to each other's respective way of being. The third one is we are part of an organic world all around us in which interrelationships at all levels of life should be honored. 
The fourth one is we should recognize our interconnectedness and how respect and sharing must permeate our thoughts and actions. So take these four things, go out into the world, and begin. It's now time to establish your own identity and use what you've been given here to begin your education. Listen to the people and the land around you and begin and do something good. Do something good. Congratulations. Thank you, John Paul. We will now begin the official process of conferring the degrees Candidates for degrees will be presented by Senior Vice President and Provost James Bean. Will all candidates for doctoral degrees please rise and remain standing. <laughs> Upon the recommendation of the faculty and with the authority of the university system, I am pleased to confer upon you, the members of this June graduating class, the respective doctoral degrees which you have earned at the University of Oregon. Congratulations. <laughs> and please be seated. Will all the candidates for master's degrees please rise and remain standing. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and with the authority of the Oregon University System, I'm pleased to confer upon you, the members of this June graduating class, the respective master's degrees which you have earned at the University of Oregon. Please be seated. The academic deans will now present candidates from each academic division. David Frank, Dean of the Honors College. Will the candidates for bachelor's degrees in the Robert D. Clark Honors College, the oldest honors college in the country with a four-year curriculum, please rise and remain standing until the degrees have been conferred. <laughs> Mr. President, each year six outstanding UO undergraduates are designated the Pi Beta Kappa Oregon Six. Their exceptional academic records combined extraordinary breadth and excellence in upper division liberal arts courses with very high grade point averages. This year, the Clark Honors College is home of four of the Oregon Six. The college presents to you an outstanding graduating class to receive the appropriate degrees. Brad Foley, Dean of the School of Music and Dance. Will the candidates for the bachelor's degrees from the School of Music and Dance please rise and remain standing until the, degree, the, degree, the degrees have been conferred. Mr. President, on behalf of my distinguished colleagues, I'm proud to present the qualified students to receive the appropriate degrees from the only comprehensive School of Music and Dance in Oregon and the largest program of its kind in the entire Pacific Northwest. May their leadership in the arts bring beauty, harmony, and peace to the world. Thank you. Michael Bullis, Dean of the College of Education. Will the candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Education please rise and remain standing until the degrees have been conferred? Mr. President, the qualified students before you are now presented to receive the appropriate degrees. Tim Gleason, Dean of the School of Journalism and Communication. Will the candidates for bachelor's degrees from the oldest and the best School of Journalism and Communication in the West please rise and remain standing until the degrees have been conferred. Mr. President, an informed citizenry is essential for democracy and central to the school's mission. The qualified students before you, graduates who will shape the future of journalism and communication professions and our public discourse, 
are now presented to receive the appropriate degrees. Francis Brunette, Dean of the School of Architecture and Allied Arts. Will the candidates for the bachelor's degrees in the School of Architecture and Allied Arts with students who make a world that is beautiful, green, and just rise and remain standing until the degrees have been conferred? <laughs> Mr. President, the qualified students, remakers and analysts of the great built and visual environment, creators of beauty and questions, and crafters of plans and policies that change the world before you are now presented to receive the appropriate degrees. Dennis Howard, Dean of the Charles H. Lundquist College of Business. Will the candidates from the amazing and world-renowned Charles H. Lundquist College of Business, please stand and remain standing until your degrees have been conferred. There you are. Mr. President, these highly qualified students are now presented to receive their appropriate degrees. Scott Coltrane, Dean, College of Arts and Sciences. Will the candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Arts and Sciences please rise and remain standing until the degrees have been conferred? Mr. President and Provost, the College of Arts and Sciences is composed of 50 degree-granting programs and home to 500 faculty, among whom this year one received the National Medal of Science. Mr. President, the qualified students listed in this section are now presented to receive the appropriate degrees. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and with the authority of the university system, I am pleased to confer upon you, the members of this June graduating class, the respective baccalaureate degrees which you have earned at the University of Oregon. Graduates, you may now move your tassel from right to left. And I invite all of you to join me in a salute of thanks to your families and friends who have, by their contributions, helped to make this very special day possible. We are now at the closing of our university-wide celebration. In an attempt to make commencement more personal for the graduates, we have planned individual college, school, and department ceremonies throughout the day. The program you received for this ceremony is also meant to serve as a guide to those activities. You will find a listing of ceremony times and locations as well as a campus map. Graduates, feel free to take your guests on your own personal tour of the classrooms, buildings, and outdoor spaces that shaped your time here. In addition, we invite all of you to visit GradFest, where anything you need for a day on campus will be available. At the EMU, you will find food vendors, dining areas, a photo booth, a duck store booth, student performances, activity area for children, relaxation room, craft center, bikes for loan, and more. We open our campus for all of you to enjoy it. We will now begin our recessional march, and I ask that the audience remain seated while the recessional takes place. Congratulations again to all of our graduates. <laughs>